If your child isn't already on the internet, you know eventually they will be. The internet is a fantastic tool for learning and for fun entertainment, but it comes with dangers. We hear stories on the news all the time, so educating our children about internet safety is so important. But while many parents know they need to address it, they aren't always sure how to or what the best precautions are to take. So with us this morning to help us is Debbie Ballard. She is the director of community affairs at Sprint, a company that is doing a lot in this very important area. Good morning. Good morning and thank you so much for having me here to talk about this very important topic of keeping our kids safe online. I am so with you and I got to tell you my kids are you know quite young and they do not get on the internet uh, when it comes to being at home but you know eventually I know they're going to be they're going to want to chat with their friends online they're going to want to look at their emails and no matter what there is a safety issue behind that, right? You know, there are a lot, as you just mentioned, of really good things about the internet, but it also comes with some potential risk or dangers. I like to ask parents, would you allow your child to walk alone, unsupervised, in a big city? No. And obviously the answer is always no, I wouldn't do that. And they wouldn't do that because of the p potential risk or dangers. Well, the internet is like a big city, and kids sometimes knowingly or unknowingly will go to unsafe websites. There are a lot of stats out there about internet safety, and just recently I read that somewhere between 5 and 20 percent of online teens have reported that they have received unsolicited sexual uh, solicitations. Oh my gosh. And so, you know, that's just one of the reasons why we need to be educating our kids and talking to them about internet safety. And there is, there are things we should say that parents can do. Like, for example, I know a lot of my friends have installed a special software to block online activity, but that's not enough, is it? Right. The software is great, but frankly, that's step one. There is no replacement for proactive parents in terms of keeping their kids safe online. It really starts at home, let's That's be right. honest. That's right. All right, so let's talk about some of the basic things that parents should know to keep the children safe. Okay, just some basic guidelines. We need to set boundaries. You know, set time limits for how long your children can be online. Also, know what websites your children are visiting, and then talk to them about what kind of information that they can share and what kind of information that they should not share. For example, their telephone number, their address, where they're going to be, things uh -huh. like that. And then it's also important to just keep the lines of communication open. You know, let your children know that they can talk to you about anything that, they, that is happening or that they see online. Also, we encourage parents to keep computers in central common family areas. Right, where you can see them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then also use some of the monitoring or filtering uh, technologies that are available. But again, as I mentioned before, be proactive in terms of your parenting with kids. My kids always say, if, can I have a computer in my room? No. No, that's true. And then, uh, and you shouldn't let them have it there. Um, also, some of the smartphones today are capable of accessing the internet. And at Sprint, we have a variety of parental control options that parents can customize to help keep their uh, kids safe online. Now, I can see a lot of kids that are aware of what the parents are doing when it comes to supervising and watching them saying, okay, I need my privacy, mom. You know, and kids love their privacy, and, and they should have it, That's let's right. be honest. That's true. But how do you help them understand that, you know, look, I'm gonna give you your privacy, but we both have to do this together? Yes. You know, parents have to, uh, to learn how to balance fear and trust. And as I mentioned, uh, really, you need to ask lots of questions, and then you need to communicate, communicate, communicate with your children. And that's what helps to form the bonds of trust. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot from my friends. Be careful, Christy, with that. What qualifies as cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is online harassment. Right. And it could take the form of uh, someone hacking someone else's uh, account. It could also involve identity theft. And when uh, sometimes when kids do that, they will then send hate pages uh, as that person whose identity that they assumed. So sometimes, actually, this kind of conflict is actually worse than face-to-face -face conflict That's because right. kids say actually meaner things when they know that people don't really know who they are. Exactly. So it's really, really very hurtful and very har and potentially very harmful. And a lot of parents, unfortunately, sometimes don't even know their child is becoming a victim of cyberbullying. So what, what are some signs that could alert a parent? 
you know, they might be avoiding the technology. Mm. They might appear stressed when they are receiving emails. They might be uh, withdrawing from family and friends and not wanting to do any outside activities. Uh, their grades might be mm. slipping in school. They might not want to eat or sleep. So any of those things, if you see that, might be a sign that they are being cyberbullied. Now, Debbie, what online tools can parents, you know, like me, uh, use to help educate themselves on, on internet safety for their children? Okay. At Sprint, we have partnered with three leading advocates in this space. A National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Oh, that's a big one. Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Mm -hmm. And the National Education Association Health Information Network. Awesome. And we partnered with them to provide free resources, a free resource called Fortinet Safety. And Fortinet Safety was designed to really help teachers, parents, guardians, to open the lines of communications with children. Now the site also is for educators, so tell me how schools play a role in this. Well, first of all, it has age appropriate uh, material. Oh, excellent. So for kids, there are videos, there are games. For teachers, there are downloadable lesson plans, tip sheets, there are newsletters, all kinds of information that will help, again, open the lines of communication with your children. And the really good thing about it, well, there are lots of good things about it in, in that the information, it's free oh. to uh, the kids, to the parents, guardians, and teachers, and it comes in both English and Spanish. Excellent. So even for maybe some of the abuelos out there that don't speak the language, they can even help out. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. you so much, Debbie. And you know what? The bottom line is it really does start at home with the parents. That is so, so true. And I want to thank you also for having me here again today to discuss this really important topic in terms of keeping our kids safe online. Sprint has been a leading advocate since 2007 in this space. And again, I would just encourage the view viewers to go to fournetsafety.com to learn more about keeping our kids safe online. Great thing. Great thing that you guys are doing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Again, the website, you just heard it, and I'm going to say it again because it's good to say it over and over. It's four, that's the number four, netsafety.com. If you have kids and they're using the internet, we encourage you to log on and begin educating yourself and your children today. Take a look at it.